far would you go to chase the American dream? For Melvin Caballero, the chase began in a third world coffee field. He chased the American dream over a river and through a desert. And he chased until a nation locked him up and then lauded him for his courage. Melvin Caballero is the American Dreamer. Melvin Caballero's last name could not be more fitting. In Spanish, Caballero means gentleman. The soft-spoken and quick-to-smile senior at Bridgewater State University appears to be a typical college student. He works at a restaurant to pay the bills, he's done some traveling, and he spends Sunday evenings with his family for a home-cooked meal. Um, Lord, we thank you this afternoon because we're here reunited with the family. But his journey here to Bridgewater has been treacherous. And for the first time, he wants to tell his story about how education may have saved his life. So I come from a large family. Uh, I live with my parents and my 10 brothers and my sister. And we grew up um, in the mountains, picking up coffee from the trees. So this was a hard job that we, ever since I can remember, I started like um, doing it. Every morning, uh, six, in, six o'clock in the morning, we'll wake up, uh, eat breakfast, and then head to the coffee fields uh, to do the work. Working long, back-breaking hours, six days a week, didn't allow much time for a traditional education. Well, um, education in my family wasn't uh, the number one priority. The most important thing for us was to learn how to work in the fields. Going to school was something that we wasn't encouraged to do. We will uh, go to school, do the first, second grade, learn how to read, learn how to uh, write, and spell our names. Almost all of Melvin's siblings didn't even advance past the second grade. When I started going to school, uh, I started liking school. I was helping my, prof my teachers in uh, elementary school to uh, revise exams, and I liked that. I felt uh, special doing that. That was like a way to break the model that in order to succeed, all you had to do was work in the farms. There was this thing that was waking up, like telling me, if you go to school, you can succeed. And so Melvin's dream of studying in the United States was born. But whereas his brothers crossed the border illegally to become dishwashers at a restaurant in San Francisco, Melvin had his eye on education and education alone. So at just 16 years old, Melvin left the only world he'd ever known and said goodbye to his family on May 5th, 2008. I was excited because I was living chasing my dream, but it was hard for me to leave my family. It was hard the moment when I saw my mom in the eye and I said, mommy, I'm leaving. That broke my heart. I started crying. I tried not to cry because I didn't want to see mommy crying. But I felt that I had to do it in order for me to, help, to um, support my family. I felt that I need to leave. I knew that I couldn't, in Honduras, I couldn't uh, reach to my uh, dreams. So when I said goodbye, my body was leaving the house, but my heart was staying behind. The seriousness of what he was undertaking dawned on him the first night. Armed guards snorted cocaine and threatened to shoot the immigrants in the head. When one girl was dragged into a back room by a guard, Melvin could only watch. She returned later, bloodied and unwilling to meet anyone's gaze. Staying in the house uh, was when I first wake up to the reality of what, is, uh, what it takes to be an immigrant, or what it takes to come to the United States. When I left home, I didn't have this knowledge of what is the risk that we are taking uh, by traveling to the United States alone. 
uh, being in the house and I started to see things that I could never I could never imagine that people would do to other people. Hungry and afraid, Melvin couldn't wait to leave the house. But when he did, he and 35 others were stacked in the back of a pickup truck, one on top of another, as they were transported to the next safe house. I'm traveling in that situation, like uh, being piled, like it were, if, as if we were like coffee sacks, one on top of the other. Uh, was one of the toughest part. Several hours later, the truck pulled up to a ranch. Not long after, Melvin and a larger group of about 120 immigrants were told to get in the trailer of an 18-wheeler. The overcrowded trailer was full of animal feed and patrolled by an armed guard. As Melvin clutched desperately to a small bottle of water, the armed guard threatened to kill him if he defecated inside the trailer. The animal feed, he explained, was more important than Melvin's life. It's like as if you were dying little by little. Um, at the beginning, it didn't hurt so much, but as time was passing, there was a point that personally it makes me, it makes it difficult for me to talk about it. I reached it to a point that I asked God to like just kill me, like to just die. That was really hard because although it was my decision, I felt that I didn't deserve to be in that position. Uh, I was just 16 years old. Eventually the doors to his coffin swung open. After arriving at a home in Reynoso, Mexico, Melvin stayed for six days just a stone's throw from the Rio Grande River. The United States was on the other side of the water. That was the point when I saw my dream, like right across at, at the other side of the river. Journalist Jorge Ramos recreated the swim from one bank to the other to show what these immigrants face. Strong undercurrents push us at least 200 yards from our starting point. Just imagine. What would it be for, for a kid? Melvin was one of those kids, and he can still recall the panic he felt as he fought the current. Somehow, I don't know where did I get strength from, but I reached the uh, other side of the river. I stepped on American soil, and that was just amazing. So they crossed the river. They risked their lives, and the American dream for them starts right here. Now knowing that there is more struggles to come. After a day of rest at another safe house with dozens of other immigrants, a group of 20 were told to start walking. For five days, the group of 20, which included a 75-year-old man and a four-year-old boy, walked through the desert. They survived, Melvin said, like wild animals. Melvin wasn't sure where he was going, who was in charge, or where the police might be waiting. On the fifth night, he got an answer to the last question. The immigration police were on the group seemingly out of nowhere, and a girl named Ana from El Salvador, who had been sleeping on his lap, was taken into custody. One of the officers got a hand on Melvin, but the terrified boy wriggled free and ran. Melvin managed to reunite with several members of his group and got in a car, driving for four hours. The driver told them they were 10 minutes from a safe house, and that's when Melvin heard sirens. I, I was like getting ready to start running when the police, came, the police officer came and he punched me right in the face. And I have a mark on my face that I don't think it's ever gonna go away. I was covering blood and I started crying because I, I needed that opportunity. I needed to escape. I needed to run. So maybe when the police officer um, saw me that I was covering blood, he thought, oh, this guy is already done. And 
as I was running, I just remembered that I felt a pinch in my back, and that was all. Melvin had been hit with a taser, and he was going to an immigration detention center. For four months, Melvin was housed at the U.S. Custom and Border Protection's Harlingen Station. After staying the mandatory 30 days, Melvin requested his deportation back home to Honduras, but the judge, curiously, wouldn't deport him. His next stop was the airport for his first ever flight, and it was headed to a place called Boston. A Honduran American family living in Hyde Park wanted to sponsor Melvin's entry into the United States. The Escobars took him home and treated him as their own. <laughs> Granted a temporary stay in the United States, pending a commitment to pursuing an education, an emboldened Melvin began attending Boston International School at 16, despite not speaking English. He excelled in the classroom, finishing near the top of his graduating class and being honored with awards from the school, as well as late Boston Mayor Thomas M. Menino. Away from school, Melvin's acclimation to Boston was quick. He became comfortable with his new neighborhood. So, it's, it's pretty nice, I'm always quiet. A brand new climate, and all of the animals in his new home in Hyde Park. There were little reminders of home everywhere. These are the colors that they paint the houses, like on the outside in, in Honduras. It's like, really like, like just really bright colors, like the blues, the yellows, like just really bright colors like this. Atlantis always, yeah, always have of course, he grew closer to his new family, too. Sometimes I, 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 I barely remember when he first came because I have so many memories of him recent. Yeah. And I love him. Yeah. <laughs> I love it too. Oh, are you <laughs> this brotherly love is, well, brotherly. <laughs> Melvin and his three newest siblings rib each other constantly, and they laugh a lot. But the family also knows every detail of Melvin's struggle. Yeah, I, it. I worry sometimes they're going to try. For Melvin, the Escobars went from strangers to saviors. Uh, we, we grew to be like best friends and basically we're blood now. That's how I see it. It makes me feel special and that, and that makes my love for them uh, to grow. So like, I feel like that every day that passes by, I love them even more. After graduating from high school with honors, Melvin applied to 12 colleges. The responses came in and all of them began with, we regret to inform you. Melvin was crushed. By the time his 10th letter came back, he was too dejected to even open it. It's a good thing he did. Bridgewater was the only place that knew or had a, like, an opportunity for me. And when I came here, I felt, I felt welcome. I felt at home. The university's social justice mission spoke to Melvin. Its professors challenged him, and its opportunities opened up another new world for him. He completed a service trip to support the homeless population in Arizona, and later went to Florida to work with migrant families. Melvin's own struggle for citizenship finally ended in May of 2016. I didn't want that everything that I, that I went through when I was coming here was just gonna stay in vain. No, I wanted to become a citizen of the United States. I wanted to feel the pride that I made it. The same summer that he became a dual citizen of Honduras and the United States, Melvin took advantage of one of Bridgewater State's most valuable opportunities by conducting graduate level research as an undergraduate student. Melvin didn't even hesitate when he chose his topic, immigration. Melvin Caballero is um an awesome example of undergraduate research because what we hope for in these kinds of opportunities in providing funding for students to do research is that they can deepen 
the experience of being a student. Melvin's research earned such acclaim that he was selected to go to Washington, D.C. to present his findings to policymakers and the higher education community at the Council on Undergraduate Research's Posters on the Hill event. As a newly minted American citizen visiting his nation's capital for the first time, Melvin naturally wanted to take in the history of his adopted homeland, and he was given a tour of the city by Bridgewater State University's Director of Undergraduate Research, Dr. Jenny Shanahan. Dr. Shanahan has guided Bridgewater State students to the conference every year she's been on campus, and in total, the institution has sent student representatives to the nationally acclaimed conference seven times. When I was at the Martin Luther King uh, Memorial, I felt like crying because um, I know he fought for like uh, civil rights and uh, uh, freedom. And I felt that what I did, I came to the United States, I came uh, to looking for something that, that I didn't have in um, Honduras. But he did more than just soak up history from the outside looking in. So you're on your way to the Capitol? Yes. How does that feel? It's good. I don't really believe it, but I guess it's real. Melvin shared his story and research with education policymakers and legislative staffers. Senator Elizabeth Warren received a copy of his findings and he took a tour of Congressman Stephen Lynch's office. Everywhere he went, he retold his story. These meetings proved to be insightful. Everything that I went through, um, that it was worth it. Powerful. And emotional. Melvin was hundreds of miles from home, or thousands, depending on how you look at it. But DC felt like an extension of the Bridgewater area. Bridgewater State, huh? Yes. I'm from West Bridgewater. Okay. I used to work with the, the President Clark as well, so okay. there's a Bridgewater connection here. Yes. I thought I'd be working here when I went to Bridgewater. So. Right. <laughs> I never thought that was going to come to the, to the capital, right? Here, and yet, there he was, presenting both his findings and his personal experience to people who needed to know about it the most. And, um, I was born in Honduras. It was a big family of uh, ten brothers and one sister. Most of them, they just see it on the news, but they see it from different perspective. They just see from the perspective that immigrants are taking over, that immigrants are, are taking the jobs, and that they need to go back. But when I talk, I feel that they are welcoming me into their community to become part of their society, to become part of their family. They learn to shape what they're learning in the classroom and bring that together with experience, in this case, um, personally lived, and create something that changes the world for the better. We all now have Melvin's story. The Spanish major was also chosen as Bridgewater State University's representative for 29 Who Shine, a recognition of outstanding public higher education students in the Commonwealth. Before even taking a final exam, Melvin received the greatest graduation gift he could have imagined. His parents flew from Honduras to the United States to visit their son at school for the very first time and to be in the crowd when he earned his degree. They toured the campus, visited the president's office, and met a star-struck dean. He was honored and had such nice things said about him. The trip was especially meaningful for Melvin's father, who, decades earlier, was incarcerated for eight months for his own failed immigration attempts. Muy feliz que quiero estar en la graduación de él. Eh, pues, y no tengo palabras como como expresarme más, verdad, de, de según la emoción que tengo. Eh, pues, solo darle gracias a Dios por lo que Dios ha hecho con cada uno de nosotros. When the day finally arrived, Melvin could barely contain his excitement. Recuerdo cuando él se vino para acá, yo lloré. 
pero no me imaginé que él iba a llegar a ese, a lograr lo que él tiene ahora. How do you feel? Super excited. I'm about to cry though. Melvin managed to keep it together across the stage, greeting President Fred Clark with a big hug. But once he got off the stage, the emotions overcame him. And what happened next really needs no explanation. No matter what Melvin does next, he'll do so with a growing family. His fiance will arrive in the United States in the coming weeks, and his two fathers have become close friends. Melvin's future is limitless, and who's to say where he might go next? He might even end up in Washington, D.C. If you ever are interested in politics, definitely. <laughs> no matter where Melvin's journey takes him next, you can bet he'll be ready for the chase. So this entire journey has uh, taught me to see the person within me and to see the person, a strong personality, a person that fights for what he wants, a person that doesn't give up easily, a person that can achieve great things, a person that can do more than what I have already done. And this has taught me to see my past, like my background, where I come from. Plus, I ha it has taught me to see the greatness that I can still achieve.